Mr. Chairman, committee members, thank you for the opportunity to testify this morning. Uh, my interest in the, the climate change debate was triggered in 1998 uh, when I was funded by an INSERC strategic project grant and subsequently by uh, major funding from the Canadian Foundation for Climate and Atmospheric Sciences to determine if there were regular cycles in fish productivity on the Canadian West Coast. Although climate was suspected to play a significant role in marine productivity, accurate fishing and temperature records have only been kept in that region for about 70 years. And we needed indicators of fish productivity over thousands of years to see uh, whether there were recurring cycles in populations and what phenomena might be driving these changes. Uh, my research team collected and analyzed core samples from the bottom of deep coastal British Columbia fjords, and we collected more than 5,000 years' worth of annually deposited mud layers from these basins, and that was giving us one of the highest quality climate records available anywhere today. Uh, in it, uh, we see confirmation that natural climate causes can be quite dramatic. And just as an example, uh, in the middle of a 62-year slice of the record, about 4,400 uh, years ago, uh, there was a shift in climate in only a, a couple of seasons uh, that went from very warm, uh, dry and sunny conditions to a regime uh, that was mostly cold and rainy, and that persisted for several decades. You might imagine what impact that might have had upon Amerindian populations in the region might be fishing, uh, dependent on fish. It would be changed their life completely. Uh, in that record, uh, we discovered repeated cycles in marine productivity that correlate very well with cycles in the brightness of the sun, and this was not unique. In hundreds of other studies, have shown exactly the same thing, that the sun and not variations in carbon dioxide, uh, the gas that's most targeted by Canada's national climate change campaigns, appears to be, to be the most important driver of climate change. Solar scientists predict that by later in this decade, the sun will be starting into its weakest solar cycle of the, pe of the past uh, two centuries. And this will likely lead to unusually cool conditions on Earth, which may persist uh, for decades. And planning for an adaptation to such a cool period should be the primary uh, position for governments. And it's global cooling, uh, not warming, uh, that is a major climate threat to the world. And this is particularly true for Canada, uh, with such a high latitude nation as we have, where agriculture is, to, is right at the edge of, of, of where we can farm. Through another INSERC strategic project grant that I currently head up, uh, my research team is studying climate variability in northern Canada as so as to advise government and industry about the long-term viability of the strategically important Tibet to Contoito uh, winter ice road. Uh, this seasonal ice road is critical to the economy of the region as is the only overland route that services the diamond mines and exploration camps in the central northwest territories in southern Nunavut. Uh, beginning 70 kilometers uh, north of Yellowknife, uh, this world-renowned ice superhighway that you may have seen on Ice Road Truckers uh, television series traverses 600 kilometers, and 88% of it is built over frozen lakes with uh, little uh, fewer or little uh, uh, portages in between. So, Senator Patterson, this would be familiar territory for you. You've driven the road. Does exist? Are you confirming that? On that road, yes. But, but <laughs> on that road. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, listen further, and I'll tell you how much longer. Uh, during the 70-day uh, season, uh, more than $500 million in equipment and supplies are carried to the camps. And the economic activity associated with the operation of the ice road contributes over $1 billion to the economy of the Northwest Territories every year. And for remote northern Canadian communities, similar ice roads are very critical uh, supply links. In our research, conducted uh, every year in, in the latter part of March, when activity in the ice road is uh, starting to diminish and we have access to the, the, the camps along the way, we collect ice co or core samples from lakes along the, the, the route. And by comparing and comparing lake sediment of the past 3,500 years, we are able to recognize cycles and trends impacting climate change, and from that, we can predict possible future trends in climate ice cover and things like fire hazard. We can recognize in their uh, intervals in the past when it's been warmer and drier and so on. It's a particularly challenging task in, in this region as the short thermometer record only extends back to about 1950. And it is in the Central Northwest Territories, includes records from only four very widely spaced meteorological stations. Preliminary research, uh, results from our research indicate that considerable climate variability uh, has existed through the last few thousand years, with winter and summer temperatures uh, often becoming decoupled. A multi-decadal uh, weather phenomena uh, known as the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, 
which is a huge driver uh, of climate. It's a lot uh, uh, very similar to the, uh, the shorter but better known El Nino phenomenon. It was only discovered in 1996, so it shows you how climate uh, research has changed over the last uh, 20 years or so. It seems to contribute to the stepwise uh, temperature changes as these phenomena vary between positive and uh, negative phases. There's also a correspondence between solar cycles and seasonal climate variability uh, during negative Pacific decadal oscillation phases with solar cycle troughs corresponding to colder winters. As we are about to head into a series of very weak solar cycles, uh, they're going to persist for several decades, and since the Pacific decadal oscillation, again this de decadal scale phenomena, has just shifted uh, to negative, uh, we project a period spanning several decades uh, where conditions will remain suitable for continued extensive use of the ice road. As I am sure you have concluded from our testimonies today, the field of climate science is vast and rapidly evolving. Uh, many things that we thought we knew about climate system just a few years ago are now proving to be highly uncertain or quite mistaken. It's no exaggeration to say that in the period since the Kyoto Protocol was introduced, there has been a revolution in climate science. If back in the mid-1990s, we had known what we know about climate change today, there would have been no Kyoto Protocol because it would have been considered unnecessary. In some fields, the science is indeed settled, uh, but the science of global climate change is still in its infancy with many thousands of papers published every year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members, and I look forward to answering any questions you have.